Okay, our goal is to flatten out the, the ground. That, uh, that hole is where we pulled a tusk out back in episode one. So again, just using my backhoe, pushing things uh, over the, the little cliff edge there. This, this dirt is sort of amazing to work because it's all pretty much pretty uniform size. There's, uh, there's fines, there's, uh, there's big stuff. It packs down pretty darn nicely. So here I'm back dragging. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually just trying to drive back and forth over the, uh, the ground. That definitely, uh, definitely helps pack things down. I do have to pick the big rocks out. They, they get hooked under the, uh, the bucket and then they leave a big furrow. So one of the things I'm doing here, it's, it's not obvious, but I'm just driving back and forth over the area. So that does pack the thing down. The backhoe weighs 14,000 pounds. Now, the next thing I'm going to need, in addition to clearing rocks, is to get water back in here. So, I have water in my shop, I just need to get out that wall, and you really want to be careful how you exit a wall. These comically long drill bits are really handy for that kind of thing. You can drill all the way through the wall in one go, with, uh, and then know you're in a, a perfectly straight line. So, all I did, I set up a little laser level where I wanted my pipe to go, and uh, basically started a hole with this comically long drill bit. It, the nice part about doing this is now you know that you're aligned, and uh, then when I, I drop my hole saw on here, I know it's in exactly a straight line with the, the hole that I made in the, in the inside. It's surprisingly hard to measure and to relate the inside and the outside of the building any other way. Super handy to have photos on the inside, by the way. Anytime I'm doing construction, I try and, try and make sure I'm doing that. So here, I, I know the, uh, the composition is pretty much two layers of plywood and insulation, so easy enough to do. Uh, so now I have a pipe. It basically uh, starts on the inside, uh, goes to the outside. So what I'm going to do here is take a piece of PAX, that's uh, this nice red uh, tubing. It's pretty freeze resistant. This thing is going to freeze basically every winter because this is Fairbanks, Alaska. But uh, so PAX comes out of this ammo bo box. Now I really need a way to get the, the PAX out of the ammo box. So this is the idea here. I'm, I've just taken the lid of the ammo box and I'm uh, just making a spot for the pipe to get in and out. Just a little, a little bit of metal working here. I haven't done any of that in this series yet, and I do a ton of it. Uh, fabrication's kind of a kind of a fun thing. I started doing it for robotics, and I end up doing it for all sorts of stuff now. Now. I really don't want the pipe to get caught on the sharp edge, so I'm just uh, leaning it down a bit. And then the idea is, this is the pipe that's going to supply the water for both using during the concreting process and uh, for the, the greenhouse. Now, if you haven't done any plumbing, getting a end on a piece of pipe is not always terribly easy. It's not made simpler by the fact there's like 14 different kinds of pipe. PEX is really nice because these little fittings just push on and uh, that's, that's it. They push on, they, uh, they, they're sort of one-way latched, and, and that's it. And now you have a pipe thread, so now you can screw in any other device, like this is a little hose adapter, so uh, screw that in, uh, a hose, and boom, now we have hose. So <clears throat> my goal here is to make concrete forms and then fill them with concrete. So I, this is going to be the foundation for the building, so my, my first step is to basically just pack down the dirt all the way along there. I used my new hose to wet things down. Seems like when soil is wet, it lubricates the, uh, the, you know, the particles of soil so they slide against each other a little bit more easily. So it's, it's easier to pack things down when they're, uh, when they're wet. So again, backhoe super duper useful for this. It's honestly probably not a great compactor, but it uh, it's the one the one heavy equipment tool that basically does the job of every possible tool. Uh, next up was to lay out the building, and I really should have gotten more pictures of this, except it was late at night. So once the four corners are in there, then it's basically just a matter of getting the forms in. So the the, the forms 
basically they just have to sit at the right position defined by the four corners and then at the right height. So the height is a matter of adding and removing dirt. Basically uh, put, put wood down, check to see where it sits, shov shovel stuff out. Mostly uninteresting, Here, here's something a little bit more fun is uh, taking a big rock out of there. So we do have some enormous rocks. Now this one would be really easy to pop out with the backhoe, but it leaves sort of a two foot wide swath of destruction around it. So doing this with hand tools is a little little less collateral damage that way. And a shovel basically just gets stuff out of the way. Uh, if you want to if you want to pull something out of the ground, a pry bar is actually a pretty effective way to do this. So this is just a little sharpened chunk of rebar. And then I'm pounding in with a little sledge, a little hand sledge. And uh, if you can get under the rock, then you can lever it out of there pretty easily. Harder with a rounder rock. This does disturb the ground around it still somewhat, so not, uh, not completely ideal, but uh, at least I don't have to tunnel through solid rock to put my forms in the right position. So the other tool that I just love, so this is my pneumatic nailer. And if you want something nailed, There, it's it's nailed. It's totally spoiled me. So it's, it's putting in three inch ring shank nails basically. And uh, as far as getting stuff together just in an extreme hurry, it's really, really good. Now, this one I actually pulled straight out of the dumpster. So I'll show you why. So right here, it's actually out of nails. Uh, the, it's got a little magazine there that, that holds 60. And so now when I try and nail, no, no nail comes out. And then you get to reload it. So here, you notice I have to hold the little magazine follower back manually as I drop in new nails. I know, totally worth tossing a $400 magnesium frame nailer in the dumpster. Uh, so I, that, that was an extremely good score, I, I, I thought. I actually bought the parts to fix that little follower, but I've never bothered to put them in because uh, I've kind of gotten used to just reloading it uh, the manual way. It is lovely doing semi-automatic nails. I uh, can't actually use them here because uh, I do want to pull these interior forms out. So what I'm, what I'm using the wrench for is to straighten up this board. So this is a bunch of old call lumber and this one had a really bad twist. So I'm basically, I'm fixing the twist with the wrench and then I'm dropping the screw in there. I'm using screws because then I can back them out once the, the concrete's in and cured. And I have to do it at a weird, awkward angle so that it uh, it actually goes uh, goes in in a way that I can get it out after the concrete is inside there. So th th that that's a fun trick. Here's another fun trick. If you, if you want to bend rebar around a corner, it's actually pretty straightforward. So this is this is only half inch rebar, and it bends quite easily, really. Uh, but getting a clean bend, like a sharp bend, uh, is actually really hard unless you have some handy device that just will not move and a chunk of pipe. And then uh, the chunk of pipe actually keeps that bend from being this weird, like wobbly one foot wide mess uh, and super easy way to get uh, rebar in there. Now, the footer that I've designed for this greenhouse is, is not to any code, but the Lawler code. So it, uh, it's tiny and uh, I'm a little concerned about the, the building blowing away. So this is a little bit of insurance against this. So I've, I've just driven a chunk of rebar into the ground and then the concrete is going to sort of get cured around the top of that. And then the bottom is actually stuck into the ground quite a ways. It, honestly, a bigger footer would be a more reliable way to uh, get more ground contact there. Apparently this is not, not done very often because in a lot of soils the rebar will rust away and then rust its way into the concrete and make a mess. Uh, luckily our, our soil is super well drained here and doesn't seem to conduct electricity under almost any circumstances I could, I could find. So this is the final setup. So it's just two by fours vertical and they're six inches apart. This is a tiny footer. I mean it's, it's proportioned about like a actual code footer but it's about probably half as wide and half uh, less than half uh, as tall. So it's literally only like three or four inches deep. But I, I've got uh, one string of rebar running continuously around the thing. It's a greenhouse, not a nuclear reactor. So this, this should work. This should be okay. So let's do this. Next step is concrete. Uh, you want to make sure that the concrete doesn't immediately dry out. I, I mean, it, it, concrete does not dry. It cures, and it cures with moisture. So I want to make sure that everything stays uh, wet as long as possible. Turns out the weather actually really helped me out because it started raining here 
pretty much as soon as I started pouring concrete, which is, is pretty traditional. So the mix that I use is uh, it's the one, two, three mix. So one part cement, which is about to go in here, uh, two parts sand, and uh, three parts gravel. You buy the cement. Uh, sand, I, I do have a couple of little uh, uh, deposits of around the property, uh, so it uh, and and uh, the, the gravel, of course, is I'm, I'm using this. These mining tailings actually seem to work pretty darn well as that. Uh, I do have to basically manually pick out the really huge rocks because otherwise uh, it's it's a real mess to, to put together. Uh, the water is always very tricky because. Usually there's some water built into your, your sand and your gravel. I wasn't totally sure how much water to use here, so in this case, I didn't put in very much. I always like to err on the side of less water, because uh, concrete is much stronger uh, the, less, the less water it has. Now, the downside with lower water, you'll see in a sec here. So I've, I've got my wheelbarrow full of my concrete, fr freshly made. Uh, the forms are a lot smaller than I'm used to, so... Uh, I. I kind of think, oh yeah, I'll just dump, uh, oh yeah, the forms are tiny, right? They're six inches wide, so I really overshot. And you can see this this looks more like gravel than it looks like concrete, right? It looks way too dry, like it, it doesn't even look like this is going to work at all, right? Concrete has to, you, you got to consolidate it, right, into a single mass. And it doesn't really look like it's going to consolidate until near the end, right? So you can I, you can kind of see once I hit it with the bowl float enough. Now, it was work getting this thing consolidated because there's there's almost no, you know, moisture in it. Gravity is not essentially doing any of the work of consolidating this concrete. Now, the next mix, you can see, this so next batch is way wetter. Uh, arguably really too wet. Uh, so you, you, you lose some strength by adding more water, but of course gravity does a better job of helping you consolidate the stuff. I honestly kind of prefer working pretty darn dry concrete because uh, it's, it's certainly stronger. Uh, it kind of stays put. This wet stuff tends to kind of just smoosh around back and forth and back and forth. You just you can kind of chase it around all day without it really stick, staying put. Uh, so I feel like lower water, uh, basically as low as you can get it, and uh, the point where it looks like it's not going to work uh, is basically the the right the right spot. Here's my other favorite concrete tool: is the edger and you can just run it along the edge of the forms. Uh, so here I'm running along while the concrete is still pretty wet, right? Just after placement. Absolutely works this way. Uh, you get a much better finish. So you can see here, I'm, I'm gonna chase this stuff around for uh, quite a while. Uh, so essentially at this, at this stage, the concrete is very liquidy. Uh, you really wanna get all the air bubbles out. This is an excellent state to get the air bubbles out because the stuff is just sort of a, a mushy mess. This is not a good state to get a good finish on it because it's a mushy mess. Uh, so I, you, I, I go back and forth here about a million times with the edger and I really can't get a decent finish at all because the stuff just isn't, it isn't ready for it. So th the other thing I need to drop in here is uh, I'm, I'm going to drop in a anchor bolt. So the anchor bolt's job is just to hold the building down against wind loads, seismic loads. That was essentially the process. It took, uh, I don't know, about five hours uh, to, to, to get done. You can see the rain is helping to keep this stuff wet. Uh, wet is really good. You want to keep the concrete wet for a whole week. Okay, that's the end of this episode. Next time, we're going to pull the forms off and start framing.